Suspense. Autolite and its 60,000 dealers and service stations bring you radio's outstanding theater of thrills. Starring tonight, Mr. Gregory Peck in Anton Leder's production of Hitchhike Poker. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Want to ride, young fella? Oh, you bet. How far are you going? Oh, hi. Well, hop in. Oh, thanks. That's how I met J. Stewart Belden and his canary yellow convertible. That's how I took the ride. I'll be a long time forgetting. He looked to be about 45, and he wasn't bad looking for a guy that old. He was well built, about my size, no gray in his hair. And that coat he was wearing, boy, I'll bet plenty of camels went under the clippers for that one. So you're a student, eh? I graduate from Berkeley this year. I suppose you're a vet? Oh, yes, more than half the guys are vets. What's your name, son? Ridge Fowler. Married? <laughs> not me. <laughs> Don't tell me you're a woman hater. Oh, no, it's, it's not that. It's just, well, I have enough trouble feeding myself. I said the same thing years ago. Ah, oh, but you'll change your mind when the right girl comes along. 9B-1863. Uh, dud. Huh? Oh, didn't you ever play license plate poker? License plate poker? Never heard of it. It's just like regular poker, except instead of drawing cards, you draw license plates. Now, I drew that hand. There was nothing in it. Next card we see will be your hand. Here comes one now. Watch the license plate. 4J3134. Two pair. Threes and fours. You beat me. Hey, that's a good game. What are the stakes? Well, make it easy on yourself. Shall we say $100,000 a hand? <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? Good Joe, a lot of laughs and small talk. And all the time, that convertible eating the miles up. What a car. We practically flew through Salinas, San Luis Obispo, and Santa Maria. Well, son, what do you say to a hamburger? I know a little place in Santa Inez there where they make a hamburger that drips with royalty. Well, you got me sold. And on the side, French fried onions, shoestring potatoes, and the coldest beer in the world. Stop, you're killing me. Now, tell me, did I overrate the place? Boy, that was terrific. The trouble is they give you too much food in there. I've got to quit eating like that. My clothes are getting tight. Especially this coat. Oh, that coat sure is a beauty. I'm nuts about camels here. You are? Gee, I've got an idea. Why don't you try it on? Oh, no, Mr. Belden. I, I didn't mean that. Go I... ahead. You're just enough thinner than I am that it ought to fit you fine. Well, gosh, I... I here, would... go ahead. Try it on. College boy can always use a coat. Well, well it's a good fit. It was made for you. Well, I, uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, that's a coat for a king. Well, I guess that makes you a monarch then, son. Because it's your coat now. I couldn't get over it. A coat like that, mine? I'll bet Mom's eyes will really pop when she sees it on me. Must have cost a year's tuition. I climbed back into the car and slouched down into the maroon leather seat waited for him while he made a phone call. Boy, I felt like a king, all right. I was deep in a daydream when he came out of the phone booth. Okay, Ridge, here we go. Hey, look, a straight. Huh? I drew a straight. Two J, three, four, five, six. Really? Straight? That's the highest hand today. That'll be tough to beat. <laughs> Darn tough. Well, we drove for quite a while, not talking much. We'd left Highway 101 at Santa Inez, where we got the hamburgers. There weren't many cars on the road, and Belden hadn't been able to draw anything to beat my straight. In fact, he seemed to lose interest in the game. He was concentrating on the road. It was a treacherous road, curved and high, full of hairpin turns, but... He handled the car beautifully, taking those curves fast but sure, never slowing down a bit. Well, I like speed, but all of a sudden I felt nervous the way he was hugging the edge. 
I turned to look at him to say something, and the words stuck in my throat. He changed. No more the smiling host. Instead, he was fastened to the wheel like a hawk. That's what he looked like, a hawk, ready to strike. I was tongue-tied at the change in him. I guess my reflexes worked slowly, but his didn't. He threw open his door, twisted the wheel. Hey, so long, Sonny! He jumped clear, and when the car hurtled into space, I was alone in it. My head smashed into the windshield. Another jolt threw me against the door. I'm, I'm not too clear at this point, but the next thing I knew, I was flying through space again. Only this time, I was free of the car. I landed, sprawled against the side of the hill. I began to slip, to roll. I grabbed wildly, desperately, for just anything to stop myself. But it happened. It was the trunk of a twisted, gnarled old tree that grew out of the hillside. Hit me square in the stomach. Knocked the wind right out of me. I lay there, too hurt to care. It was a minute or two before I got up enough breath to move. Finally, I edged my way up the cliff, hand over hand. It was brutal, but I was surprised to discover that I hadn't fallen as far as it seemed. I was climbing around a bulge of boulders not more than eight feet from roadside level when I looked up. There was Belden, a gun in his hand. I ducked and the bullets scaled off the boulders. He wanted me dead, that was for sure. He wanted to kill me. Why? Why? I waited, crouched. Then I heard the horn. I came out from behind the boulders, crawled up on the road. Belden was nowhere in sight. I didn't see what kind of a car it was. I, I didn't even think to look. All I saw was... <laughs> He beat my straight. 4L5555. That was the license. 4L5555. Four of a kind. <laughs> All of a sudden, I was shaking. I, I looked at myself. I was beat up, cut, filthy. But what was worse, the camel's hair coat was a mess. King? <laughs> I had to laugh. Belden was king. I was just the joker. My back hurt, my head throbbed, I ached all over. But I walked every inch of the way back to Santa Inez. It was dark by the time I got there. When I stood in front of the police station, I realized for the first time the meaning of the word sanctuary. I took a deep breath. I wanted to tell the police as straight a story as possible. I That's opened the door. Okay. Just relax the officer. That's the boy who stole my car, forced me out, took my coat. Just look in the side pocket of the coat. You'll find my wallet. What was Belden doing here in the police station? What was he trying to pull? I knew even before I put my hand in the coat that Belden's wallet would be there. And I knew, too, that the police would never believe me. No matter what I said, I was trapped. The desk sergeant was waiting for me to talk, but my throat was dry. My tongue was paralyzed. My brain spinning. Well, what do you got to say for yourself? Oh, you don't understand, you see... He gave me the coat. I didn't know about the wallet. Is that the best you can do? But I tell you, he picked me up when I was hitchhiking. I was going home from school for the weekend. Then he forced me off the road. He tried to kill me. He shot at me. Sergeant, let the boy go. But, Mr. Belden... It... I've changed my mind. I don't intend to press charges. But this kid's crazy. Easy, Sergeant. He's a war veteran. Oh, I... I see. Oh, no, no, no. Lock me up, please. Don't believe him. Everyone is entitled to one mistake. Any boy who is big enough to come into the police station voluntarily, give himself up, deserves another chance. If I could have erased the memory of his face when he lock him up, twisted him that away. wheel and screamed so long, Sonny. All these benevolent words would have fooled me like they were fooling the desk sergeant. Belden was bursting with sweetness and light. But every word he said to release me only tightened the web tighter. 
And I knew just as sure as I was standing there that he wasn't That's through with me. That walking out of that door would be like releasing the clay bird at a trap shoot. Well, it's up to you, Mr. Berlin, if you're sure he won't cause any more trouble. I'm positive that after tonight, this young man will be no trouble to anyone. No trouble to anyone after tonight. I had to get away from there. I had to run. Yeah, come back. I don't know how long I ran. I didn't know where I was. The town was behind me. I stopped. Out of breath. I I tried to light a cigarette. My hand shook like I had the palsy. It was like the South Pacific. Snipers and trees, but but what trees? Where? Then I saw the bright, glaring neon ahead. Mackinals, one sign said, and wayside rest trucks welcome the other. Just a dinky service station and a lunch wagon, but it was an oasis to me. Howdy. Hey, what's the matter, bud? You sick? Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm all right. You sure look green around the gills. Been in a fight? Uh, how soon will the trucks start coming through? Uh, you got a long wait, bud, two, three hours. Been in an accident? Look, mister, I've got to get a ride to Ojai. Do you mind if I hang around and wait? No, I don't mind. Won't do no good, though. Ain't allowed to pick up riders, company rules. Might be lucky and catch a wildcatter, but I doubt it. Oh, thanks. You sure you're all right? Maybe you better go next door and get yourself a cup of coffee. Sure look like you could use one. Yeah, (laughs) that's a good idea. Hey, if a ride turns up, I'll call you. Thanks, Mac. Oh, I'm not Mac. I'm Al. Mac works days. Well, I I felt halfway decent when I came out of the lunch wagon. I'd cleaned myself up and reduced my capital to 15 cents. Al had a customer. Gas and oil, that'll be 280. Hey, bud, come here. Uh Huh? I got you a ride to Ojai. Oh, you have? Who with? Uh, The little lady here. She's been driving all day, got an awful headache. She's going straight to Ojai. Here's the fellow I was telling you about, lady, that needed to ride to Ojai. Oh, uh, I'm afraid you misunderstood. I I just said I wished I had somebody to drive me. Oh, well, I, I don't blame you for not wanting to take a rider, but I'd appreciate it if you'd change your mind. I've got to get to Ojai tonight. Well, I... I am tired. Oh, go ahead, miss. He's a nice fellow. Well, if you'll vouch for now, me... Now, wait a minute, lady. I don't vouch for anybody. <laughs> all right. I guess it'll be all right. It was a pleasure to drive for her. She didn't say much, and I didn't feel like talking. She just sat there beside me, her eyes closed, resting. Once in a while, I snatched a quick look at her. She had long, dark eyelashes resting on her marble-like cheeks, hands folded in her lap. I found myself remembering when the right girl comes along. I was trying to remember who said it when I saw her looking at me. Feel better? Much better. I'm ashamed of myself, hesitating to let you drive my car. I'm afraid I'm overcautious. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Can't be too careful. One reads of such awful things happening on the road. Yeah. Awful things. I hadn't thought of Belden since we left Al's gas station. Now he was back in the front of my mind. You're going awfully fast. These curves are treacherous. I guess I'm just anxious to get home. Oh, yes, but... Look out! Do you want to kill us both? You almost sideswiped Oh, I'm sorry, I... What are you honking now for? He's gone. Your... your horn. What about it? Oh, nothing. I... I... I thought I'd heard it before. Before? Uh, Look, maybe I'd better drive. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. I'll be all right. I'm sorry. (laughs) I'd be sewing up my sleeves if I didn't get a hold of myself. I must have been crazy, thinking that her horn was the same as the one that had honked for Belden when I was hanging on the side of that hill. It was just a horn. A lot of horns sound alike. I tried to steady myself. I didn't want her to catch on how rattled I was. I turned to her to apologize. She was 
putting a cigarette in her mouth, but it was purely automatic. She was sitting up straight, tense. Her eyes were glued to the road ahead. And it hit me. I'd been over this road earlier tonight with Belden. Suddenly, it, it loomed up, that, that wide bank curve just ahead, the spot where Belden had tried to kill me. My hands froze on the wheel. I held my breath, and then I saw her hand reach out. What are you doing? Let go of my wrist. What's wrong with you? I was only reaching for the cigarette lighter on the dashboard. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. That, that curve back there, it... Pull over and stop. Huh? Pull over, I'm going to drive. She drove about a mile, I guess. Neither one of us said anything. Then, without any warning, she took a sharp turn off the highway and down a rutted dirt road. Hey, miss, you're leaving the highway. Well, we'd better stop a while. You don't look so well. Oh, I'm all right now. You don't look it. Better have a drink. Uh, reach in the glove compartment to find some scotch. Oh, no, really, I'm all right. Well, then maybe I need it. Maybe it was the drink. Maybe it was the girl. Maybe it was just relief. But I felt peace for the first time that night. I watched her inhale. The glow from the cigarette lit up her high cheekbones. I couldn't see her eyes until she turned her head. What's your name? Ridge. Mine's Virginia. Hi. Hi. You must think I'm pretty much of a jerk the way I've been acting. <laughs> it's all right. Things like that happen to everybody. Yeah, I guess so. Look, I'm all right now. I could drive. What's your hurry? Well, I... I, I thought... What's the matter? Don't you like to sit here with me? Well, no, it, it's just... Uh, I thought you were in a hurry. I'm not now. Are you? No. No, I... I'm in no hurry at all. She didn't seem to be moving. It was so gradual. I caught a trace of warm perfume in her hair... She smiled at me, one of those elusive smiles, half innocent, half... Her head touched my shoulder. I accepted the invitation. I like you, Ridge. I like you a lot. Yeah. You know, tonight back in the filling station, when I first saw you, I... What's the matter, Ridge? The miniature license tag on your key ring. Yes? 4L5555. Four of a kind. Four of a... You play license plate poker? I'm afraid so, Ridge. Four fives. It's the license of the car that picked Belton up after he tried to kill me. That's right. Then you're in it with, with me, Sonny. Oh. I fell right out of the car. Hard. My face buried in the dirt. I didn't black out, but it would have been much easier if I had. Only my mind functioned. Everything else seemed paralyzed. Well, you took your time getting here. I was delayed. You were supposed to be here waiting. What if I hadn't been able to keep him? Oh, I knew I could depend on you, darling, to detain him. What is that supposed to mean? Did you have to go as far as you did? Did you have to let him kiss you? Do you know a better way to keep a man on ice? A perfect wife, a little helpmate. Oh, shut up. Put him in the back seat. Now, just a moment, darling. I'm going to do it right this time. There'll be no slip-ups. You fool! Put that gun away! Why? Don't you realize if a bullet is found in the body, it won't be accidental death? You're always so right, aren't you, darling? Only because you're so stupid. Stupid, am I? Who planned this whole thing? You did, and badly. If you'd handled it right in the first place, his body would be burned up by now, along with the car. Now put him in the back! Belden's wife. But what... Why do they want to kill me? Why? Belden picked me up. Throw me in the back of the car. Uh-huh. Hand me the wrench, Virginia. Stuart! This time, warm, black oblivion rushed over me. After a second, the pain was gone. And so was I. Consciousness returned in splotches. Oh, we've planned. My head was like a short wave receiver, now static, now clear. 
Now okay. clear now. Static now. Anything behind us? Nobody. We're almost there. Are you sure no one has discovered the car yet? Of course not. The way it's lying, nobody will see it until daylight. And then J. Stewart Belden will be found dead, burned to an unrecognizable crisp. We can shake this place, go to South America. You can go. I have to stick around, remember, to collect the insurance and pretend I'm heartbroken you're dead. Will that be so hard? You didn't talk like this when you married me. But of course, there was a lot more money then. Yes, swindled from suckers. Since when have you become fussy about where money comes from? What's changed you? The schoolboy? Don't be a fool. All right, we've got to work fast. Give me a hand with them. Wait. Huh? Here comes a car. The end of the line. But anyway, now I knew why. I was a stand-in for a corpse. I'll put it in this pocket as soon as I get him out of the car. All clear? Yes. This was it. They were on either side of me. I had to think, think straight. My body still felt numb. One chance. If only my muscles coordinated, I'd wait till he dragged me out of the car and then I'd fight. Virginia, get the gasoline can out. I felt him grab me under the armpits. I opened my eyes just in time to see that murderous wrench in the girl's hand. As she brought it down, my eyes closed. <laughs> Hit me hard, but it wasn't the wrench. It was Belden. The wrench had folded him up and he collapsed on top of me. Nerve in my body was alert now. I didn't know what would come next, but I was ready for it. She pulled Belden's body off me. She wasn't aware of me watching her. She was too busy dragging Belden over to the rim of the cliff. She was transfigured with hate. Well, Stuart, that's how you planned it. Accidental death! And then she kicked him, and he disappeared over the edge. I didn't wait to see any more. I crawled out of that car, and I started to run right down the middle of the road. She saw me. Wait! Stop! Wait! Red! But I kept right on going. I glanced back. She started the car. She was coming right at me. First I thought she was just trying to catch up to me. Then I realized she was trying to run me down. She was trying to kill me. I was crossing to the left side of the road. She was right behind me. It was just a question of seconds. And suddenly, around the bend, a big truck. I was sandwiched between them. stood, stunned with horror, her scream ringing through my head, and the picture of her in the car, swerving off into space into the canyon below. Hey, Bud, you all right? Yeah. What happened? She, she went off the road. A crazy woman driver. We'll have to report it. Come on, I'll give you a ride into town. Do you hear me? Don't you want to ride? Yeah. Yeah, sure. What are you staring at? Your, your license plate. See, I'm one, 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 one. Hey, it wasn't my fault. You saw how it happened. <laughs> Four aces. Four aces. <laughs> I'd won. I'd taken the last hand. But as long as I live, I'll jump out of my skin whenever a car pulls up and a voice asks... Want a ride, young fella? Thank you, Gregory Peck, for a splendid performance. Mr. Peck will return in just a moment. Well... Think you'll get back to your old picture album after that performance, Hap? No. I guess I'll just listen to Frank Martin and go to bed. <laughs> Probably dream I'm in the Sahara without an Autolite Stay Full battery. Yes, friends. Like the faithful camel of the Sahara Desert, the Autolite Stay Full battery you buy goes a long time between drinks. It's a trouble-free battery and needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Autolite Stay Full's greater water reserve practically eliminates one of the major causes of battery failure. Get an Autolite Stay Full. Money can't buy a better battery. Autolite means batteries. Stay Full batteries. Autolite means spark plugs. Ignition engineered spark plugs. Autolite means ignition system. The lifeline of your car. In its 26 nationwide plants, Autolite manufactures bumpers, die castings, horns, instruments, and gauges 
lights, ornamental plastics, and more than 400 other automotive, aviation, and marine products. All are famous the world over for their Autolite engineered dependability. And now here again is Mr. Gregory Peck. It's been a great pleasure to appear here tonight with this fine cast of suspense actors. And I'm expecting almost as much pleasure from listening next Thursday when radio's outstanding theater of thrills brings you Robert Young and Virginia Bruce in Celebration, another gripping study in... Suspense. Gregory Peck may soon be seen starred in the 20th Century Fox production, Yellow Sky. Ed Begley played the part of Belden, and Kay Brinker was Virginia. Tonight's suspense play was written by John and Gwen Bagney, with music composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The entire production was under the direction of Anton M. Leader. In the coming weeks, suspense will present such outstanding stars as Edward G. Robinson, Lucille Ball, Ray Milland, and John Garfield. Make it a point to listen each Thursday to Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. And next Thursday, same time, hear Robert Young and Virginia Bruce in Celebration. This is the Autolite Suspense Show. Attention, all men. Join the fighting outfit that defends America, the new National Guard. Good night. Switch to Autolite. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.